Hello everybody. I, Neetu Mane M, faculty from Tripoli Department of Sai Vidya Institute of Technology, welcome you all to the Basic Electrical Engineering Laboratory of First Year Engineering course. In this session, let us learn about Experiment 6, Measurement of Resistance and Inductance of a Choke Coil using 3 volt meter method. Now, what is a choke coil? In electronics, a choke is an inductance coil of very small impedance very small resistance used to block higher frequency alternating current and provide sufficient energy for glowing in a fluorescent tube. A choke coil is represented by a pure inductance capital L in series with equivalent resistance small r. The choke coil parameters can be measured using two methods 3 voltmeter method and 3 ammeter method. These methods are also used to measure the quality factor and power absorbed by the given choke coil. The lower the value of the resistance small r, better is the quality of the coil. Before using any equipment, we should have the knowledge of its ratings. Hence, by conducting this experiment, we will know how to calculate the resistance and inductance value of a choke coil by measuring voltages across source, rheostat and the choke coil and hence this is the 3 voltmeter method. As per the aim of the experiment, we have to learn how to measure the resistance and inductance of a choke coil by using 3 voltmeter method. 3 voltmeter method, uh, let us learn the circuit diagram now. In this circuit diagram, uh, we have used apparatus like single phase AC input supply, single phase 230 volts 50 hertz AC input. Then we have a rheostat that is also called a variable resistor. We have a choke. The complete L plus R in series is actually a choke coil. All right. Then um, we are using measuring instruments such as AC voltmeters. As the name indicates, three voltmeter method, three voltages are used. One across the source, Vs, one across the rheostat or the variable resistor, Vr, and one across the load or the choke coil, Vl. Right. And we are also using an ammeter, AC ammeter to measure the current that flows through this circuit. So we have one rheostat, AC voltmeters 3 in number in the range of 0 to 300 volts, AC ammeter 1 in number in the range of 0 to 2 amps and we are also using a choke coil to complete this experiment. Now let us see how to rig up the circuit practically. So now as per the circuit diagram, we have input leads with two terminals. So these are the AC single phase input terminals. There are two in number. One is called the line and the other one is the neutral. And now we also saw that we have a choke coil in this experiment, right? So this is the choke coil. These are generally, this is the choke coil. These are generally used in the fluorescent tubes. And um, this is actually cased. If we cut open this, the cross section of the choke coil is, will be like this, in which we see a number of uh, wires wound up, isn't it? Now we are trying to measure and we are learning to measure the resistance and inductance of these coils in fact. So this choke coil will come with two terminals, right? In AC the polarities do not matter. So let's learn about the ammeter now. We are using one ammeter, isn't it? So this is an AC ammeter in the range of 0 to 5 amps. This comes with two terminals. Next, next, we are using a voltmeter AC type. So the indication of an AC is given by the line like this. So this is a voltmeter and this is of the range 0 to 500 volts. Since this is a 3 voltmeter method, we know that we are measuring voltages across 3 different points. One is across the source, across a variable resistor or the rheostat and the other one is across the choke coil. So we have 3 voltmeters here. right? Then coming to the variable resistor or uh, rheostat, this, can, uh, this is uh, the rheostat. 
and the knob which is used to vary the value of the resistance of the rheostat is this. So moving this button, we can vary the resistance offered by this rheostat. Right? And the terminals used to connect the rheostat are these two. All right. Now that we learned about the equipments used in the experiment, let us connect the circuit practically. In the circuit diagram, we can see that one terminal from the input AC supply is fed to one end of the ammeter. Right? So this is the line of input supply L. So we connect that from the ammeter. So we have an ammeter here which has two leads already. So let us connect it from here to the other end of the ammeter is connected to the rheostat. So this end of the ammeter will be connected to rheostat. Alright, next. From the rheostat, from the rheostat we have this from the rheostat we have it connected to one end of the choke the whole of this is a choke coil right so we have it connected to one end of the choke so one end of the choke from the other end of the choke we have it connected to the neutral of the input supply from the choke it goes to the neutral supply all right. Now, in this, these are the input terminals, isn't it? This is uh, the fuse which comes for the protection of the circuit uh, of the input supply. And then this is the op uh, switch used to operate the AC supply, right? Now, we have to connect. Now, ammeter is connected. We need to connect the voltmeters. One voltmeter is connected across the supply. So, one voltmeter, we will connect it across the supply. Another voltmeter is connected across the rheostat. So one end of the rheostat is here and this point is same as this point. So I can connect the other end of the uh, voltmeter here. And we have another voltmeter connected across the choke coil. So I take the last voltmeter. And connect it across the choke coil. Alright. So let us know which meter is reading what value. This is the ammeter I reading I. This is the voltmeter reading Vs volts. This is the voltmeter reading uh, Vr in volts, voltage across the rheostat and this voltmeter reads the voltage across the choke coil. Let us switch on the circuit and see how the uh, circuit behaves. So once we have switched on the circuit, move the position of the rheostat to the farthest end and let us switch on the supply. Now you can notice the value of the meters when the rheostat is placed in the farthest position. So here we have I reading as 0.45 amperes, Vs reading as 236 volts, Vr 63 volts and Vl 215 volts. Let us tabulate these readings. Now tabulating the readings in the tabular column, I was point, I was 0.46 Vs was 236, Vr was 63 and Vl was 215. Now, let us move the rheostat to the next position to take down the readings. Now, note down the readings. I is 50, uh, I is 0.5 amps, Vs is 236 volts, Vr is 43 volts and VL is 224 volts.
So noting down the values for the second reading, I was 0 0.5, VS was 236, VR was 43 and VL is 223, 224. I have noted 223 here. Now let us take the third reading, moving the position of the rheostat much closer towards the leads. Now the reading is I is 0 0.53, VS is 237 or 236. VR is 25 and VL is 230 volts. Now noting down the last readings, alright, let us calculate the further uh, uh, values by using the formulae. Now let us switch off the circuit. Now let us understand why the circuit behaved this way. We saw the main parameters of the circuit were VL, VS, VR and I. Now we have a phasor diagram from this experiment. The current I is taken as a reference signal here. So from 0 we take current I as reference signal. Um, the voltage VR in the resistance that is the variable resistance is uh, in phase with I. We know that in resistor, voltage and current are always in phase and hence Vr is in phase with I. In inductor, I lags behind voltage by 90 degrees generally. So we have, with respect to this current, the voltage Vl is lag lagging by an angle theta. And now, we will construct a parallelogram by, by drawing a parallelogram, uh, by drawing a line parallel to these, we will get another point. Let us connect the point and this is the supply voltage Vs. So Vs is the resultant vector of Vr and Vl, Vr and Vl. From the phasor diagram applying the cosine formula, cos theta is given as Vs square minus Vr square minus Vl square divided by 2Vl into Vr. The impedance of the choke coil can be calculated by using a small formula. So this is an impedance triangle in which Xl is in uh, Y axis, R is in the X axis. So applying uh, trigonometric relations in this, we get cos theta is equal to R by Z. So we can uh, get the value of R which is equal to Z cos theta. Next. Applying the uh, sine theta formula for this triangle, sine theta will be equal to xl by z. So xl can be uh, obtained by using this formula z into sine theta. Now, further now that we know xl, we know the xl can also be calculated as 2 pi fl. Using this equation, we will further deduce the inductance of this choke coil. So l is equal to xl by 2 pi f where F is the frequent, uh, supply, of, uh, supply frequency which is 50 hertz. What is the significance of this particular uh, experiment? We learnt the choke coil will be uh, better in its performance when the value of small r will be lesser and the value of capital L will be greater. Why? Because Inductor is an energy storage device which stores energy in the form of magnetic field and when, which opposes change in current. Hence, it is used in a fluorescent tube. Since that is why we can see that we do not have much power dissipated because the R value is less. And um, this is one of the reasons why most of the domestic appliances had fluorescent tube as uh, one of the lighting applications. Now that we know the formulas from these, we will learn how to complete the further tabular column. We have the value of Vs, Vr and Vl. Substitute in each case. So first cos theta you will get a different value. Once you get cos theta, you try to find out the value of Z, then try to find out the value of R and then Xl by using the formula and finally is the value L by replacing frequency of the supply as 50 hertz. Similarly, repeat the steps further for further readings and tabulate the value of L and R in each case. And notice 
what is the quality of this particular choke coil. I hope you understood the experiment. Thank you for watching.